Hey everybody, welcome to Saving Vegas. And today, we're gonna to be doing an experiment. I see this topic come up a lot of times, um, basically on how to hook up and how to run your Serban Vega speakers. More often than not, I see people want to run multiple speakers at the same time, because for some reason, Serban Vega is just that brand that you can't just own one set of speakers. Once you have one set, you have to have another and another. And I mean, really, that's how I started all this. So there seems to be a lot of confusion when it comes to um, the impedance ratings of these speakers and how you can and can't run them with different amplifiers. So impedance measured in ohms is not really the same thing as resistance um, when it comes to these speakers and they'll be they'll give them an eight ohm rating or a six ohm or a four ohm rating that is a nominal impedance rating if you take a speaker that has an eight ohm nominal impedance rating and you take your multimeter and you set it to uh, test resistance and you hook that up to the terminals on your speakers you're not going to get that nominal impedance rating you're going to get whatever resistance there is, what I'm just gonna call at its resting position. So with the speaker not functioning, just sitting not hooked up to anything and you hook your multimeter up to it, it's gonna give you a different reading than what that speaker has for a nominal impedance. And one of the reasons for that is in the speaker's operation, the amount of resistance that that speaker is going to have that it's gonna be putting on your amplifier is going to vary with the frequency that's being played. So to simply put it, you can say that nominal impedance rating of a speaker is going to be your pretty much overall average throughout the frequency spectrum. Generally, the lower the frequency being played, the lower the uh, resistance is gonna be, or the lower the impedance rating is going to be, and it's gonna be harder on the amplifier. So your amplifier is working harder to produce those lower frequencies. Now, I'm not gonna get too far into it and make it all confusing. We're just gonna keep this simple and then we're gonna do this experiment. And where some of the issues come with people running some of the bigger Serban Vega speakers on either your AV receiver or your integrated two channel, whatever it is that you're using to power them, uh, a lot of the bigger 15 inch model Serban Vega speakers are going to have a nominal impedance of four ohms. So those larger 15 inch Serwin Vegas are going to put a bigger load on your amplifier and especially playing uh, the lower frequencies. So it all has to do a lot with the, the type of music you're listening to um, can be more demanding on the amplifier. Also, you're gonna see, and it's most commonly that a lot of amplifiers and especially um, AV receivers um, such as this Harman Kardon AVR240 here, they're going to give a power rating uh, at eight ohms, which is, I don't think this one's rated to play anything less than eight ohms. So really what I'm gonna be doing today is going to be kind of a bit of a strain for this, for this amplifier. And the experiment is just going to show you guys what that amplifier is doing and, and, and how much harder it has to work when you have multiple sets hooked up. So if you have a set of, let's say, while well, we're dealing with some VS series speakers here, we got a set of VS 100s and a set of VS 80s. Both of these are rated uh, to have a six ohm nominal impedance. Some of the larger models you get into the 120s and the 150s have a nominal impedance of four ohms. And those are gonna be the speakers that are gonna make your amplifier work harder than maybe it's rated to. So. This Harman Kardon AVR240 is rated for eight ohm speakers. It doesn't even say it's rated as low as a, uh, six ohm speakers. It literally just says eight. Neither of these speakers have an eight ohm nominal impedance. They're both rated at six ohms. So even just one set of these, these both being rated at six ohms, whether it's the 80s or the 100s, technically is too much for this amplifier. But I know you can run a 150 off here and that's a four ohm nominal impedance so people do it all the time i know it can be done and we're just going to see uh what effects it has on this so like i said before this is a Harman Kardon avr240 uh it is a 7.1 uh 
surround sound receiver and power ratings i believe at eight ohms stereo so that is just your two front channels left and right running it is rated at 65 watts now i do believe these harman kardons are potentially a little underrated i'm sure maybe it does a little bit more but that's not really what we're talking about um, these speakers here having i believe 100 watts for the 80 and 125 watt power rating for the 100 that 65 watts is going to be more than enough to to get a good sound and, and get these at a pretty good volume level so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open this guy up and i've got a temperature gauge and the sensor i'm going to open this guy up i'm going to get that sensor set right in the heat sink and just kind of looking from the top i've never had this off before but it looks like it does run right along here um, I am going to be setting up my tablet up on top of it as well. I'm going to be running a timer and basically what I'm going to do, I've got a playlist selected and I'm going to run that playlist. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do 10 or 15 minutes. I haven't really decided yet. One I'm going to do with just the 100s and see what temperature, what the temperature is at after 15 minutes or 10 minutes or whatever I decide. And then I'm going to do it again with all four hooked up. Now, this is a 7.1 channel receiver. It does have the ability to run an all stereo mode. So I could technically run another set off of the surrounds or the rear surround and then have that full stereo mode. I believe the ratings for the surround, um, if you have all five channels running, so your center, your two fronts and two rears, it is 50 watts times five. So you get a little more power when you're running out of just the two channels obviously running more channels the power supply is only going to do so much so what i'm going to be doing is just two channel stereo and do the hundreds first and then i'm going to bring the 80s in after and run it with both and just see where we're at I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna have it dropped in here. Like so. Kind of run that out that way. And then I'm gonna put the top back on and yeah. I want to make sure that uh, these temps, I'm going to get as accurate a reading as I can. So all I'm doing right now, um, I got the unit turned on. There's nothing hooked up to it, um, either incoming or outgoing to the speakers. And I've just got the unit switched on. And basically I'm just, um, I'm just letting it sit. I'm just trying to find what its idle temperature is, just so I have the same starting temperature um, before both tests. So I'll probably give it 15, 20 minutes uh, and then I'll know what my starting temperature needs to be for both tests. Well, while this is doing that, I'm going to show you what happens when you hook up a multimeter uh, and test the resistance of your speaker uh, as they sit. Okay, so we got both um, the 100 and the 80 here. So it's reading 3.8. Let's look at that. 3.8. So they both measure with 3.8 ohms of resistance which again is not your nominal impedance but i just thought i'd show you that so it reads 3.8 so what happens when we hook um them together let's measure once i hook these two together at the speaker terminal that's going to be going into the amplifier itself and then we know what the resistance is uh, right at the terminals to the amplifier So here's just a calculator I found online. It's an impedance power calculator. So I just typed in 65 watts, eight ohms, and then it shows the speaker one and speaker two, uh, if it's hooked up in parallel, both being six ohms, it would be putting out 86.67 watts. Now, 
this isn't guaranteed. It really has, there's a lot to do with if that is actually going to be putting out that much power, but that's how much the amplifier would be trying to put out. And because there are two six ohm speakers run in parallel, it would be a three ohm load. And that would make for a 173 watts it's trying to put out, which would be an overload for this receiver. And it's kind of funny, it gives you this little warning. Total load impedance is below half of the 8 ohm minimum required by the amplifier. So basically it's just saying we are overloading this amplifier by running the speakers that we plan on running.
So there we have it. After the 15 minute tests, both with a six ohm load and the three ohm load, uh, just one set of speakers on the amplifier. It came to 52.9 degrees Celsius or 127 degrees Fahrenheit. And then with two speakers wired in parallel for a three ohm load was 57.9 degrees Celsius and 136 degrees Fahrenheit. So I, this receiver also gives you the ability to run a five or a seven channel stereo mode. And that makes the surround sound channels play in full stereo. I did run a 15 minute test using that function. So you're actually using four channels of the amplifier. So the power rating isn't going to be quite as high as just using two. And you could tell it wasn't as much power and it just didn't have that much control over the speakers and it just didn't sound as good. The temperature after that test with the four channels instead of two was 53.9 degrees Celsius. And uh, it was definitely a lot easier on the amplifier doing it that way, but you are not getting as much power output as you would just using the two channels. So my final thoughts, as for using this receiver to power two sets of Serban Vega speakers, not really the greatest. I would recommend not running these speakers in parallel on two channels because you are going to fry something eventually. Uh, I would do mo no more than maybe a four ohm load per channel. And even then I would keep an eye on your temperatures and I would stay away from running for long periods of time.